Those of a certain age might remember in movie theaters uh, on Saturdays especially, because they were trying to get kids to come to the movies, they would have like, these little short serial things, you know, Lone Ranger movies or whatever, and, and it was a, and they were like they built one one from the next. So, you know, at, at the end of every week, there was like a, some cliffhanger to get you to come back and buy more candy next week at the movie theater. And if you don't remember that, and I don't actually, uh, <laughs> so. Those things all made it to television, and you might remember that. And instead of, you know, instead of selling candy, you watch the commercials, right? So, but you get the idea, right? These cliffhanger endings, and they get you to kind of keep coming back. Well, in recent days, John's Gospel has been has kind of been like that. We've had some really big stories over the last four or five days, right? So on. Friday of last week, during weekday mass, we had the multiplication of the loaves, right? Five loaves, two fish, boom, feeds 5,000 people. That's pretty good, right? And at the end of the story, you're wondering, wow, what's going to happen next? <laughs> and if you came back on Saturday or you just watched it on the stream or you just, you know, read the scriptures at home, you realize another great story. Jesus walks on the water. Right? In John's gospel, at the beginning, the first 12 chapters, there are these series of signs, and there's not that many of them. And that's two of them in, in, in two days. It seems more than a bit ironic that two days later, we are hearing the crowd say, what sign can you do? What do they want, right? He's fed 5,000 people with a couple of handfuls of bread and he's walked on the water. That's a pretty good week by anybody's standards, right? What sign can you do that we might believe in you? And of course, that's the key of John's gospel. The whole thrust of John's gospel is getting disciples to believe. And indeed, Jesus does these signs, right? So that we might see and believe. And through belief, as we heard the other day, we, we might come to eternal life, right? Jesus is doing sign after sign after sign, but they don't see it. Or it's like, hey, that free lunch was really great. And a couple days later, it's like, oh, I forgot all about that. You know, ingratitude, which is actually kind of true of human nature, right? You know, you, know, give, you know, give a man a fish and he'll be back at your door tomorrow looking for another free fish. And of course, there's nothing new about this. And in fact, it's, it's the, it, the, 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 the literature as literature of the gospel is incredibly clever, if nothing else, right? Because these, this crowd says, well, our ancestors ate manna in the desert. Top that, Jesus. Right? Which, of course, he does. Right? And we'll talk about that momentarily, right? But that comes... You know, the, the, the people who got the manna in the desert were in the same boat, right? God had liberated them from slavery. God had led them through the Red Sea safely. God had destroyed their enemies. God had led them to the promised land. And all that they could do was complain. Right? All they did was complain. It was never good enough. And they kept forgetting, oh, by the way, you used to be a slave. Oh, by the way, the, the Ar Egyptian army was chasing after you with chariots and horses, and they're all dead. By the way, the Lord is leading you to the, whole, to the promised land. I think we all had fall into the same trap, right? through the eyes of the his, our history, through the eyes of our tradition, right? We have seen great signs 
in the Hebrew scriptures, with the story of the Exodus, for example, and certainly in the Gospels, right? It's sign after sign after sign. And what do we say? Lord, give me a sign and I'll believe. How many do we need? How many do we want? When will it ever be enough? The whole point of Jesus' coming into the world was, okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to reveal who I am. Right? And it should be enough for you. And that should be enough. Why? And Jesus answers the question today, right? Because I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Now, indeed, physically, we can know hunger. Physically, we can know thirst. But spiritually, we've been given all the graces we need. We've been given all the signs we need. We don't need to chase after sign after sign after sign. Lord, just give me one more and I'll believe. Right? If you bring that mentality to it, you'll never get enough because you're going to get a sign and it's going to be, well, that was pretty good. The Lord has given us every sign. And in fact, the great sign is the one he refers to today. And this, this, uh, this uh, discussion is going to continue. And tomorrow, we're going to con you know, we, we will continue with this thought, right? But already we know, right, that the great sign is that. <laughs> Jesus reigning in glory from the cross, his arms stretched in love for all of us, in mercy of all of us. That is the sign, folks. Every other sign leads and points to this one. Right? And the great one of all, of course, in our world is what we do right below that crucifix. Celebrate the Eucharist, right? Where we receive the bread that has come down from heaven. Right? And those of us who have the incredible grace to share in that gift, We'll never know hunger spiritually. We'll never know thirst spiritually if we could just simply see and believe.